how do, okay, how do you do application failover in a cluster? So th this requires, it, it requires a certain amount of careful design in the application. So the application has to be designed to be able to fail over. Uh, but basically it's done with the lock manager. Okay, so that, you know, this, this is in the situation where you've got, you know, you've got one copy of the application that's really in control of things because, yeah, you don't, for, you know, there, there can be efficiency reasons why you'd rather just run a single copy of, of the application. And then on the other members, you would have, you know, the, the, the standby copies, if you will. And so they're just sitting there waiting, right? They're, they're just, you know, waiting, waiting for this other copy to die. And that, right, and that's done with a lock. Right, there's just, you know, it's, it, you know, uh, you, you designate a lock that's called the, the, the I've got the application lock. And so, whichever copy of the application comes up first, takes that lock, it gets the lock, and, 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 and that is the signal to the rest of the cluster that says, okay, this is the running copy. You start up other copies of the application, they try to take the lock. They can't get it. So they say, oh, okay, someone else already is, is working, so they just sit and wait. And then if this application goes down, then the lock is released, okay, and at that point, some other copy of the application will get the lock. And it'll wake up and say, oh, I've got the lock. Oh, all right, I better get going. And then, so that's how you transfer control. Now, at that point, you still have some kind of, you know, data synchronization or recovery issues that you might have to deal with because the copy of the application that failed, of course, probably had data in memory that somehow needs to be recovered and then picked up by the new copy. And so typically you would do that like, like the way or, you know, Oracle and other databases they they maintain a journal, right? So so Oracle, every update that you make to the database gets written to a log. May not necessarily get written to its its home location in the, in the database, but it's always written to the log. And in fact, the client, the Oracle client, doesn't get completion back until it's really out there in the log. And then. To do uh, the the you know the new copy of the application has to do a recovery, which means it reads the log, and then it applies you know and it reads the database, and then it takes it finds all of the records in the log that are not yet reflected in the database, and and it updates the database. So that's a that's a very typical technique of doing that sort of thing, and of course. If you look at, I mean, right, the file system from the point of view of the cluster mechanism is just another application. So the, the file system does not have a log. The file system just always keeps the disk consistent. And so, in fact, there, there is no failover. All, actually, all of the files, copies of the file system are running simultaneously. So if one node goes down, well, okay, that's, you know, that that that's a set of that that's a set of open files that just all got suddenly closed. Period, and that's the end of it. No recoveries required, and the rest of the copies just go on. And so, in fact, we chose to implement the file system in that model rather than client server with recovery for a couple of reasons. Where one of one of them is performance, because if you have a client server file system design in a cluster. Your data basically has to take two trips, right? You, may, you, right? you make a request to read something, you send that to the server, you know, to the file server, now the file server has to read the data from the disk, okay? Whereas in a VMS cluster, yeah, you just make the, the, the request directly to the disk, so you get, you know, you need half the bandwidth. But the other reason was, had, it, the other reason had to do with reliable software design. We looked at the possibility, well, you know, we could do a server process and then do a failover when, um, 
you know, uh, when, when that server fails, failover is always complicated. And it only gets exercised when a cluster node fails, which means most of the time all of this complicated code doesn't get run. Okay, and complicated code that doesn't get run tends to have more bugs. And so we decided, you know what, let's not do that. Instead, let's just give every process in the system its own, you know, it, it, it's, its own instance of the file system, and they all communicate with the lock manager all the time. And so, so all of the synchronization in the file system is done with the lock manager, regardless of whether it's running in a cluster, whether you're communicating with other instances of the file system on the same node, or whether you're communicating with other instances of the file system on another cluster node. It's all the same code. It's exercised all the time, and that makes it a whole lot more likely to work. One, one could also build a, um, you know, a high availability application by just you know, building it on top of shared access to the data. Uh, so again, this is more, more the VMS cluster way. So you would actually have multiple copies of the application running simultaneously, you know, each one on a cluster node, and you can, you know, you, you need some way of, of arbitrating, well, which copy of the application are, are you, am I going to connect to when I ask to connect to it? And, uh, you know, actually, we've, we've got mechanisms in the TCP IP services that let you do that. And so that gives you not just reliability, but it gives you scale. So you've got, you know, if you have six copies of the application, well, now you have, you know, six times the processing power available to the application. And if one of those systems goes down, then, well, okay, now you're down to five copies of the application. You have a little, little bit less capacity, but you're still running. The simplest form of failover to implement is manual failover, right? Yeah, you, know, you, you, you run your application on one, one cluster node, and if that node crashes, then right, you, know, you go over and you, you start up the other one. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it requires minimal effort to set up. The, you know, anything involving automatic failover, distributed processing, or whatever is, is more complicated and harder to do, and it's just, how much effort do you want to put in versus what do you need?